Hello everybody, welcome today. The subject's not so nice, but I think it might help you. So today I'm doing addictions and abuse, because addiction and abuse go hand in hand. There's so much pain with abuse and hurt and anger, resentment, etc, 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 that it's very easy that the two link up, because we need an addiction to push it down. Not all of us have dealt with our abuse. Some of us have been abused, and um, I didn't deal with mine until I was 42, and they had to give me a big electrical accident and send me to the other side, and I had to come back and deal with it. So mine was severe enough that I'd blocked it out so well that I had to be <laughs> electrocuted to knock it out. There are many people who've been abused who deal with them, but now I think, just like an iceberg, there's actually a huge amount of people who have abuse and don't deal with it, one, don't remember it, don't have any recall of any sort, uh, will deny that they've been abused. The block is so huge. And because there's so much pain in the block and so much hurt and anger, that's why they have to resort to addiction because it's the only way to band-aid it. You just keep band-aiding it and keep band-aiding it. There's no judgment with whether you deal or don't deal with your abuse. You might have a memories you might be one of those people who do remember it all you might be one of those people who remember part of it or just have like flashes and then there's also where you don't remember it but you respond exactly like someone who's been abused responses and your body patterns are the same as if you've been abused even though you can't remember and the reason you don't remember is because when the abuse begins you jump out your body literally you dissociate the soul is protected and the soul jumps out it just leaves the body and the human there to deal with it and then when it's finished you jump back in the body knows it's happened but your mind hasn't got record of it because it wasn't actually there it's a survival technique it's used by people who also go through trauma they'll do the same thing just before a car accident they jump out and they they, they survive it then they jump back in so this is what you would have done to survive it there are many forms of abuse, there's physical, verbal, emotional, mental, sexual, um, psychological abuse. The abuse can be episodic, like once or twice, and that's it, or the abuse can be ritual. So you might have grown up in a childhood where you were abused ritually, and uh, you might have shut it all down, or a lot of it down, and only have part memories of it. Your addiction will be linked to that, and you could have even started your addiction when you were little. For example, if you were being abused from the age of two or three, which is common, the addiction might surface in terms of food. You might be a child who comfort eats. When it gets hard, you just comfort eat and you reward yourself. And there also is a connection between abuse or will offer reward the victim. So they give them lollies afterwards or pacifiers of some sort, food or something that they like, some kind of reward. You are not to judge yourself with this. You didn't abuse yourself. It was done to you. Like you were the actual victim. But now you might be abusing yourself. So what you end up doing is if you don't deal with it and all the feelings and let it go and get some help with it, you end up abusing yourself. Because that's what addiction is. It's a kind of a self-abuse. It's like you don't nurture yourself, you don't look after yourself. It's like the disconnection between the mind and the body, and that's what causes it. So I want you to be really kind to yourself. If you're one of the people listening to the podcast and you have memories, you will know what I'm talking about. If you're someone who just suspects you were abused or have that funny feeling, if you've got the feeling it probably happened, I mean, why would you choose it? You would never choose that. I started off with always having kind of a weird feeling until it all came out and I had a, a sense of it now I look back I can see all the patterns in my background like that's the way to do it if you go back you'll see physical and emotional reactions to things that were actually manifesting like your body was talking to you even though your mind had shut it out and wouldn't listen there'll be physical things that you know you'll be upset by certain things and um for example, if it's sexual abuse, there'll be some part of the sexual activity that you won't like and you'll feel like you're going to be sick. Well, that comes from that. Or with a physical thing, if you can't stand watching violent movies 
or if you're with people and they get violent and you need to leave the room, you were probably, possibly, had been abused in that way. So that's why you remember it. Now, the tie-in between the addiction and the abuse is so strong, and they feed off each other. And that's what I want you to understand, that it's not your fault the place you're in because it's feeding off each other. So the abuse wants to come out, your body wants to go, hey, I'm over here, do you remember this? And the mind's going, no, I'm not doing that, I don't want to deal with that, I told you, I'm not here for you, I'm gone. And it will set up the barrier, which is the addiction. So when you're doing your work, just know that, that if you have any abusive things that happen to you, and now particularly as an adult, and then you start straight away and want to eat, drink, smoke, um, drug it down, whatever you do, gamble it down, shop it down, that is the addiction reacting to the abuse that's actually not being dealt with. People don't talk about abuse out there. It's kind of a shame, really. Like, you can go to a therapist and a counsellor and you can talk about it. But try talking to your friend <laughs> or your family and you like the stonewalling starts and people don't want to know and they kind of shut you down. There's this message that is sent to you. Is, you know, that happened, it's all finished, get on with it. But the trouble is it's still trapped in you, it's still trapped in your body. If you've been abused and you know, you can go back and try and get some more memories. I went and had a couple of rebirths and sat breath work and that was so powerful and it released so much and it showed me and all my feelings and the flashbacks all came back and all the memories came back. I find that, that to me that was the most powerful. Some people try hypnosis but I've noticed that I've got a few people I know who I know have been abused and I just know it intuitively and they won't go there. One went to a session a couple of times and came back and said there was nothing there because the lockdown was so strong. In my case, rebirthing worked for me. It's breath work and you can actually do it on your own. They recommend that you do it with someone who's trained, particularly if some really hard stuff comes up. However, if you can't uh, do that, you could do your own little version of breath work and breathe in and out and ask them just to breathe, bring the memories up, let it release from the body and that can be done. I also think that tapping works to release things from it and the hypnosis and doing meditation to release the meditation and going to the healing rooms at night and I've done some podcasts on the healing rooms at night but you can ask spirit to take you to the healing room to be healed from it and to release it. Your addiction will lessen if you face the abuse. It's that simple because you won't need to hold it down anymore and it takes massive amounts of energy to hold it down because it's trying to come up and you're pushing it down and that's what I want you to understand every time you go to your addiction ask what am I pushing down I remember after a phone call and I was upset and then went straight to the cupboard and started eating and I asked what is it and it was anger it was the anger because the person had been abusive to me on the phone and it upset me most often it's anger, hurt, and then emotional pain. Abuse is very prevalent. They feel that one in four people down here have been abused. I would think it's personally one in three if you add all the verbal abuse and the emotional abuse that's going on. And our media are quite good at giving us programs where everyone's being horrible to each other and abusing each other, and it's seen as okay, but it's damaging. It's really damaging to your psyche. Try to go back if you can, ask other people if they know anything if you can and then do the work at releasing it. Uh, the abuse can be released and the damage from it because that's what it is, it's the damage that's causing the addiction. It can be healed, it really can, but I'm not going to kid you, it's not easy, it's not nice when I was going through all releasing it and I still do it times when it all comes up and I've got to deal with it again. It feels terrible and I cry a lot and I feel like crap and that's the truth of it. And then I keep away from people. But at least I'm, while I'm dealing with releasing it and crying and feeling like crap, I'm actually not eating, you know, two blocks of chocolate because I don't need the addiction to hold it down now. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to feel this. And that's the other thing that some of these things from the abuse, you will not get away with it. 
by just thinking it, you have to feel your way through it and you'll have to be upset and cry and you'll have to feel terrible because what you're really doing is you're, you're letting go of your little girl or your little boy feelings that happened if it was when you were young or if it's as an adult, you're letting go of those feelings and in the process you will have to actually feel the feeling. Sometimes you can't get the feeling out without feeling it. You can't think it out. You can't always do the other modalities and that comes out. Sometimes you'll have a response. And that's how I want you to understand that when you do release work, when you cry, get upset, when your body shakes, uh, trembles, whatever it's doing, when you feel really angry during it, if you get really, really hot. I know someone when they did breath work, they said they could literally feel their blood boiling through their veins when they did the rebirth. And that was the anger. And when you're feeling it, you're letting it go. And that's a really great healing. So never see it negatively. And always be really, really kind to yourself and nurture yourself and and treat yourself well. And if you need a little bowl of ice cream or to watch Netflix and watch some crappy movie, you do that. You do whatever it is. Deal with your abuse and know it's part of your addiction. And when you lessen your abuse, you'll lessen your addiction. And I really believe that's so because once I started working on myself and actually dealing with it, all those um, coping mechanisms that I used to use and distractionary measures, I didn't need them as much and they went away. And if that comes back, I go and have another look and I think, oh, here's another layer of stuff coming out because it will come out in layers. And that's the thing, you haven't failed if it's come back, it's just another layer of abuse that's surfacing now. And to be honest, <laughs> as you go down to the deeper ones, it can be harder and worse, but you are more well equipped to deal with it. In that time, you really need to be loving to yourself and kind to yourself and put yourself a little bit in the hole of, of love and comfort and keep away from anything that's going to stress you. I hope this podcast helped you. Um, I'm really sad and sorry if you're listening to it and you've been abused because until it's happened to you, you don't really know what it feels like. And if you're just on your road to recovery, don't give up. We couldn't change what happened to us, but we can let it go now and heal from it and have a better life. So I'm wishing you lots and lots of love because you're going to need it. And love yourself and be kind to yourself and lots and lots of light and our spirit to help you as well.